Hello and welcome to MIP TV. Um, back again for book number 29. This man is a, a literally, a, a literary um, <laughs> devourer of literature. Mr. Bob Cook, how are you doing, Bob? I'm doing very well and uh, this is the 29th book and uh, I'm really looking forward to gearing up to 30. So I picked a book by um, one of my mentors in my life. Um, I have two or three mentors, uh, but th this person really is close to my heart, and I wouldn't be the psychotherapist I am today without uh, meeting him. And I think I can guess who this is, but do you want to tell us, Bob? <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is uh, Richard Erskine, who you know well, and uh, I talk about a lot well, and uh, so you guessed accurately. Yes, Richard Erskine, who is, you know, he's, he kind of um, developed relational transactional analysis, a big voice in the relational TA world, isn't he? Yeah, and, uh, you know, not to be confused with two aspects. Uh, Richard Erskine created his own organisation called Intergroup Psychotherapy. Now, interestingly enough, when he created it, I said to him, why don't you call it Integrative Relational Psychotherapy? Ah. Because it's very, very, you know, you really believe in working with relationship. However, I don't know what other influences, but he decided to call the organization Integrative Psychotherapy uh, in, in, in sort of 2002. And it was 2008 when Helena Hargard and Keith Tudor um, took the, um, the road or the terrain uh, and named their school Relational Transaction Analysis, uh, which is very, very different from Erskine's view of how you use the relationship. But having said all that lot, he really was one of the few people that used the relationship in an integrated way. So it's a moot point, but I know Helena Hagen and co would say they were the authors and the, uh, they possessed the intellectual property of the term relational transaction yes. analysis. So, but this book is called Integrative Psychotherapy in Action, one of his first books, uh, talking about clinical nuances, uh, 1988. And it's edited by him and his sub-editor, Janet Morrison, who came along. I, I met her well. She, stood in, she, she went to one of the five-day marathons that he ran. A uh, lovely woman. And um, she's the sub-editor in this book. It's 1988, a fantastic book, a fantastic read. What is it that kind of sparks your passion for this? Because you, you said that quite deliberately, Bob. Yeah, I did. Besides this assigned copy, which... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is always nice to have. It is. Um, it, it, if you say to me, what do I like about Richard Erskine, besides his heart and his teachings, I would say he is a modern day genius of describing um, theory into practice. In other words, this book is really about um, the workings and teachings of a five day marathon, sorry, 10 day psychotherapy marathon. It's a book of case, it's a book of cases. It's a book of vignettes. It's a book of um, describing transaction by transaction by transaction, what he did, why he did it, when he did it, the timing of it, and what it all meant theoretically. You cannot get that. You cannot buy that. You cannot buy somebody who's a genius theoretically and a genius at explaining clinical practice into theory. Mm. I so, mean, you cannot buy that. No. It's a real crossover, isn't it? It's one thing, as, as I've, I'm hearing you saying, talking about the theory, but how, in, how it's applied and, and the, the method of its application, that's a whole different ballgame, isn't it? And he does it both. I would say to you quite truthfully that I, I, I haven't been more privileged in my life than to sit in on his psychotherapy marathons. Uh, of course, doing therapy myself, but to sit in it and listen to him talking about uh, the work from not only from a theoretical perspective, but from a relational perspective. And I've been very privileged. And I, I, I can guess some of the people in this book because I, I was in a couple of the marathons where I think these case studies came from. One of the, if you ask me what I like in terms of the overview of that book I've just told you, but I really like one of the chapters talking about the parent ego state. Okay. Now, the parent ego state in transaction analysis is the parental interjects. Mm. So it's your mother, your father, the, your teachers, your mentors, your um, the significant other people 
um, and how you work with those people. Now, if it's a healthy system, of course, they're mentors, they're positive you know, guides, they're part of a healthy framework. But if they're destructive parental interjects for you, or they're critical parental interjects for you, then the child, in transaction analysis terms, um, is often de uh, overdefined, uh, infantilized, uh, and we get a situation with a top heavy process. So in TA, you have this technique of talking and working with the in inverted commas, par parental figure, which has been so destructive, and helping uh, through the uh, parental technique, the healing of the parent, or at least, as Eric Byrne said, turning down the noise of the intense negative parent in the psychological system, in the service of cure. Mm. Very, very powerful very powerful phrase that Bob you know turn the volume down you know mm. and and trying to get the person to be in the here and now mm. as opposed to stuck in in the past and hearing the voices of the past mm. oh absolutely and you know when people come to psychotherapy um, you're not only working with the unconscious or the child ego state in transactional analysis terms but you're working with the parent ego state they come together the parent and the child ego states come together and there's many, many, many articles written about how you work with the unconscious or child ego state mm -hmm. in the service of healing, even in many ways, uh, here and now, spiritual, physical worlds. There isn't that much written on the parent, the critical parent, the abusive interject, the, the person or the figures or the significant others, which are so inhibiting and defining on the agency of the client. Not so much. How do you heal that? So he talks very well and he talks about the operations of how to work with that part of the personality in the service of cure a fascinating read sounds like it it sounds like it bob and um you know how often how often do we come across that in our practices not where, much no no i remember talking to richard about the paradigma state work which i'm a great fan of and i present at conferences and he said to me well go to an evangelical church or go to some of the gospel churches and um, you'll see, or you might see, exorcisms. Yes. What is an exorcist boy? What an exorcism boy? I'll tell you what it is. It's the banishing of the parent. Yes. Yes. Interject, which has been so negative on the yes. human worth of the person. Yes. So you're working with turning down the intensity, transforming the, um, you know, the critical part of the organism which has been so detrimental to health. Mm. Yeah, I never thought of it like that. I was, I was just kind of taken away there for a second. But yeah, mm. this, this idea of the exorcism being, being a way of, of ridding a person yeah. from mm. those voices of the past, those That's critical true. voices and all that connects them. Yeah, wow, what a great example. Yeah, and uh, he, he talked about his, you know, uh, uh, watching these exorcists if you like. Now if you watch a parent interview done properly or per parent therapy done properly from a transactionalist perspective, your definition just there Roy is exactly what it is. The next bit is what replaces that space. Yes. Hopefully a hopefully the child takes the space and the compassionate compassion Never narrative takes the place mm. of the banishing of the parental negative yes, interject. Yes. Yeah, the, ther the therapist almost fills the gap in to some extent for a while. As well. for, for a while. while, for a while, until the client then can be self, yeah, self-generating or self-efficacy. I guess, isn't it? Ah, really good way of putting. It. So, in this book, you've got a case study which looks at the techniques, the operation of a parent interview. And you've also got a case study that looks at how to reach the child, the unconscious, work with the child and the unconscious and the healing and the service of the relational cure and how he does that, the timing, the work of the therapist in the relationship with the child, this inner child work, which is so important to our profession. Yes. Yeah. I mean, certainly in, in TA and also I would say in other th other phenomenological therapies, you know, Gestalt and, and person-centred, there is mm. something about, for a time, the therapist filling that gap in, 
once mm. once that volume has been turned down until the client themselves can can actualize and or, or self-efficate if that is even a word agency will be a agency good word. thank you agency bob yeah to find their yeah. own agency in the world yeah, yeah. and to be to be in an adult place i guess yeah and you know that takes that takes time oh yeah, yeah. You don't do that in 17 sessions no you no. won't do that in six sessions you won't even do that in 60 sessions no this is this is long-term psychotherapy and i and this book is really full of a rich learnings rich vignettes an amazing book for learning well i mean you've sold it to me bob and i think i'm going to rush out and buy a copy of that i'm going to go on to my favorite bookseller and have a look and if you want to have a look at the book if you go into the comments bar below just below the video we're going to put in a link click that link and it'll take you to a bookseller and you can inspect it as always bob doesn't do this for profit this is just bob sharing his love of literature um, not being spot it's not a sponsored video in any way and uh, we'll pop a we'll pop a picture at the end as well but that sounds to me like a not to be missed book bob so no, as always bob it's fantastic book yes fantastic book, so, sounds like it's a fantastic book book bob so um thank you, thank you thank you very much thank you thank you Rory.